the Honda Cub, the single most mass-produced motorcycle in the world. Indeed, the most mass-produced vehicle ever. 100 million of these made to date and no signs of stopping. Now, begs the question, how can something that still to some is considered uncool manage to conquer the world? Well, that story started way back. Picture the scene. It's the summer, 1956, and the man himself, Sushiro Honda, and co-founder Takeo Fujisawa are touring Europe. This, however, was not a sightseeing holiday. They were there with a purpose. Sushiro looking for a key to winning at the prestigious Isle of Man TT, while Takeo had his eyes set on what would appear at first glance to be something more humble but would ultimately prove to be a much bigger prize. While in Europe, they saw how popular small bikes and mopeds were amongst its people. Winning races was all fine and good, but at that time, there wasn't much of a market for fancy recreational vehicles as much of the world was still getting back on its feet after World War II. Takeo knew that for something to sell big, it needed to have a mass appeal beyond dedicated race fans. Back in Japan, Takeo set about convincing Sushiro about his idea. His concept was an everyman bike, one that was simple, easy to use and easy to maintain. One equally at home on tarmac or mountain track. In Europe, scooters were popular, but their small wheels wouldn't cope well with unmaintained rural roads. Something like the Krida K50 was closer, but wasn't quite right. Takeo wanted something with large wheels, which had all the messy cables, hoses and engine hidden away. Oh, and you had to be able to ride it while carrying a tray of noodles. He told Sushiro, I don't know how many noodle shops there are in Japan, but I bet every shop will want one for deliveries. Fast forward to 1958 and the Super Cub is born with its iconic leg shield here, hiding away all the gubbings of the engine and providing some weather cover for your legs, coupled with wheels big enough to cope with any kind of road surface and a simple pressed steel frame, perfect for mass production. As luck would have it, Sushiro's fascination with the Isle of Man TT meant that technology from Honda's racing program meant that they could squeeze four and a half brake horsepower out of their 50cc engine. Honda had bet the house on this one, building a new 10 billion yen factory in Suzuka, hoping to produce up to 50,000 cubs a month. To give some perspective, Honda's best-selling bikes up to that point were selling two to 3,000 per month. And there it was, ready to hit the Japanese market during a recession. Yes, the Super Cub sold poorly to start, and it was only a short time after release that the complaints came streaming in. Early models having an issue with a slipping clutch. Honda remedied this in a style typical of them at the time, with salesmen and factory workers visiting each customer at home to fix the problem. Indeed, a bumpy start, but then we all know the Honda Cub is more than capable of dealing with a few bumps in the road. Going forward, things got a lot smoother in 1963. Honda had set their sights on the USA. The Super Cub spearheaded Honda's attack on the American market. At this time, motorcycles were seen as a ruffian's mode of transport. If you had a motorcycle, you were either one of those newfangled rock and roll stars or a member of some illegal biker gang. How was the humble cub meant to appeal to these rough and tough bikers? The simple answer is 
it wasn't. You see, almost as iconic as the bike itself was Honda's advertising strategy with their straightforward and simple slogan, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. And just like that, Honda changed the game. They wouldn't target or try to change the stereotypical biker. They had set their sights on your average Joe and changing their perspective instead. It worked and well. The nicest people campaign helped to bring the bike scene into the mainstream and away from the counterculture it had become. That aspect of it did live on, however, as Harley Davidson continued to trade on the bad boy stereotype and we're happy to live up to the rough, tough biker image. Well, until recently. Okay, that's not 100% true. Harley did actually try to ape the campaign themselves before throwing that out the window and leaning into the bad boy image around 10 years later. And as for the Honda Super Cub, well, that went from strength to strength. It and its various variations selling hundreds of thousands in the United States alone, acting as a springboard to help sell massive numbers across Europe, South America, and around Asia. So here we are now, and it's safe to say neither Takeo nor Sashiro would fully realize how well their gamble would pay off. The Super Cub, the single most mass produced vehicle in the world ever. Now, obviously during its lifetime, it's been tinkered around with and updated and changed a little, but Honda have never strayed far from the original iconic design. 60 years, over a hundred million units, millions of smiles, and billions of noodles delivered. It's all been said now, so you've been told on your bike, 